Good evening, you're watching Estree News. Coming up in this evening's show, we head to Hull to a fun fair which helped raise awareness of money matters. We visit or we revisit Pool Home Tower for a guided tour by its guardian. Tonight's guests are Michael Nilsson, who gave up his boxing career to write poetry. Welcome to Estree News. I'm Hugh Richards. Time now for the news headlines. A school in northeast Lincolnshire has cancelled school trips to France in the wake of the terrorist attacks in Paris. 96 year eight pupils from Toolbar Academy who were due to travel out at the end of this week for a trip as part of the French and History curriculum will now no longer do so. Chief Executive Officer of the Toolbar Multi Academy Trust, David Hampson, told Estuary TV News the decision has been made in the interest of the children's safety. Negotiations are now underway with insurance companies to compensate families for the money they've paid. People shouldn't discard damaged leather goods according to a business in Hull. The leather repair company says many people throw away leather goods once damaged, not realising that they can be repaired. They say the public, under, the public understanding of leather repair could save consumers money and landfill space. We can repair anything. Um, sofas, car seats, handbags, jackets, Anything that's leather or even vinyl can actually be repaired, recoloured, holes, tears, rips, scuffs, anything at all. It's more sort of educating the customer what can be done because people just don't realise that that can actually be done. They have no idea. They think once you know the leather item is scratched, scuffed or colour lost, it's actually ruined, but it isn't. It's far from it. A leader in wind power, Dong Energy, is to invest £6 billion in the Humber region, a new report has revealed. It involves a period of 2013 through to 2019. Elsewhere, it's expected that blade manufacturing plant Siemens will advertise operational jobs next week. It's largest recruitment drive for the company's new multi-million pound offshore wind turbine complex in Hull. Those who land jobs at the plant on Alexandra Dock in East Hull will start their roles next week. April. Pound World and Bargain Buys are to open at North Point Shopping Centre in Brands Home later this week. Up to 70 new jobs are set to be created. It will be each discount retailer's second store in the city. Looking after our money can be a challenge to the best of us at times and now an organisation in Hull is helping people to become more financially aware. Catch 22, based off Anne Libby Road, has been hosting events to make sure we're all up to speed with the basics, such as opening a bank account. And to do so, they've taken, they've taken a novel approach. Dan Kemp has been counting his pennies. Catch 22 have taken an interesting way to make sure younger people take on the monetary skills needed to succeed in life. And that's why there's a fun fair in town. It attracts a lot more people and because it's aimed at young people as well it makes it a lot more interesting and a lot more engaging and because they can bring their children along as well um, it's activities that they can get involved in and involving them as a whole family to all take on um, the advice and the tips. It's often felt that young people today don't have the know-how when it comes to looking after themselves financially. By creating this one-stop shop for anyone who needs a hand Amy hopes that they'll be able to widen their reach and support more people. We have um, a lady from the Money Advice Service at Citizens Advice. So if anybody is struggling with any debts, um, they can go and speak to her and she will be able to give them information regarding that. We've got a la two ladies from um, Barclays Bank who have come um, for young people because a lot of young people struggle with being able to open a bank account. They're not quite sure what they need. So they're here to offer advice about opening an account. Vanessa is a volunteer and explains more about what's been happening. It's a food theme, um, so just telling people about how they can budget, how they can sort of do a food shop on a budget, like with limited amount of money, especially with families, and I know families aren't exactly cheap either. Having to pay bills is something that they're all quite new to doing, um, and having to manage their money, it's not maybe something that they've ever had to do before, so it was providing this for them gives them the opportunity to learn those skills early on, to take them through for the, into adulthood. 
And if there's a story you'd like us to look into, then you can contact the news team either through the Facebook or Twitter pages or email news at estuary.tv, call 01472 Let us know what's happening in your area. Still to come tonight, we visit Paul Home Tower, the Grade 1 listed medieval ruin in much need of some TLC, and Emma Lingard will bring us the region's business news and we'll have the latest in the local sports news and results. Now, Michael Nilsson is my guest tonight. He had to give up boxing at the age of 25 after being diagnosed with myalgic encephalopathy, uh, commonly known as ME, and I'm not surprised. Uh, from there, he found a new passion for writing poetry, and he has a book published now called Selected Poems. Mike, thank you very much for coming in. It's OK. Uh, the book is beautifully produced. It's, it's, it's the traditional sim volume of poetry, which is the backbone of English literature and, indeed, English civilization. Thank you for contributing to it. Tell me, first of all, about your career as a boxer and how it came to an end. Well, I was in my 20s. Um, I was doing amateur boxing. I'd had five fights. I was training very hard training every day, I wouldn't take a day off um, and I wasn't eating properly really and um, I started to feel run down but I ignored the signs consequently I started to get flu symptoms but I tried to train through the flu because I was addicted to training and in the end my body broke down and I contracted the severely debilitating illness, myalgic encephalitis which leaves you bed it left me bedridden for years um, and you just feel extremely tired all the time and all you want to do is sleep. And um, through the frustration of the inactivity, I um, vented my anguish through writing poetry. And so you've been writing poetry for more than 20 years now. Yeah, um, it started in the early 90s. Um, but a lot of the poems were just um, very bizarre and gobbledygook because I hadn't really you need to develop as a writer and it was just basically putting down raw emotion and it was only later when I started reading poetry that I was able to structure my poetry better. Uh, did you find it cathartic? Do you think your recovery from the ME was associated with the, the creation of poetry? Well, I was, I was somebody that was always active, always doing something and because I was bedridden I needed to occupy myself somehow so writing the poetry gave me purpose. You uh, have some clear influences, I think. You, start, you started reading poetry, and of course everything you read affects everything you write. What were those influences? Well, my initial um, influence was Jim Morrison, the lead singer of The Doors. Um, I'd read a few of his biographies, and I'd read his poetry, and he, he believed in a, a permanent derangement of the senses through recreational drugs to get to the other side. and. In my naivety, I tried to emulate his lifestyle for a while in the belief that it would um, inspire my writing and be more creative. Um, but I told my art teacher about this and she said there's nothing romantic about being out your face on drugs and it doesn't help the creative process. Well, I didn't listen to her at the time, but later on I heeded her advice. I haven't taken drink and drugs for years. And I find she's right. I have developed as a writer without the need of intoxicants. And I'm, I'm told that cocaine makes you frightfully constipated. Well, it, it, my, that wasn't my drug of choice. I had amphetamines now and again, but it was mainly cannabis. But you've given up all that now. I, I don't touch any of that now, no. And you find that you write much more easily and much better as a result of being clean. Yes, because you've got a clear head. I mean, when you can't concentrate on the cannabis, your mind digresses and goes all over the place. But I find there's no bigger buzz than waking up in the morning with a clear head. Uh, the themes, just some of the themes in this book, and I've only had a chance to browse through it. I think it's beautiful, the poetry in here is absolutely wonderful. But you talk about nature uh, and a great deal of your own autobiography, surrealism, uh, and it's quite, some of them are quite light-hearted and quite fun. Yes. Um, well, I didn't want to publish a book where I'm trying to get people to feel sorry for me about my ME. I thought, no, I want it to be an upbeat book, I want it to be positive. And um, I, didn't, I don't really touch on, on the illness anyway. I, no. I'm, I'm talking about more positive things, like yeah. recollections of school days, and I talk about my dreams, which are quite surrealistic. You, you very kindly volunteered to read one for us, and perhaps I yes. could ask you to read Nature and Man. OK. Well, this is a poem about my l love for nature and also um, 
about my despair at, at um, the conflict that goes on, on in the planet. Show me the butterflies dancing free. Play me the lark and the buzz of a bee. Feel the dew that carpets the grass. Ask me now, was it meant to last? Noble tree, strong and proud, maternal forest, beautiful crowd. Leaves whisper, peace my child, God is here in the wild. Concrete armors planets face, growing quickly every space. Greed, avarice, malignant cause. Men in suits fight their wars. People starving every day. Ashamed, blind eye turns away. One day, man will lose his pride. Like the trees, live side by side. Mike, that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Troubadour Press, selected poems by Michael Nilsson. Beautifully produced book. I think that's £9.99 and available yes. at Waterstones. Um, well, they've, they've ordered it, but they can reserve a copy for you. Okay, and Amazon if you want it, but it'll take a moment or two. Yes. Mike, thank you so much That's for coming fine. in. That's very kind of you. Stay with us. Coming up after the break, we visit the Grade 1 listed Paul Home Tower. Emma Ling Lingard will bring us the region's business news, and of course, we'll bring you all the latest in local sports. <laughs> This weekend sees a concert of Haydn and Tchaikovsky's music performed by Louth Choral Society as part of the 500th anniversary of Louth Church's Spire. Joining me to tell us more about this is David, uh, R. David and Jill Parker of the Society. Thank you both so much for coming in. It's a pleasure. Uh, 500 years of the Spire. David, I think you're the man to ask about the Spire. It is remarkable, isn't it? Well, it's an iconic building in Louth, certainly, and it's uh, 295 feet tall. I have arguments with people from the West Country about whether or not it is the tallest church spire in the country. Uh, it's the tallest medieval parish church spire. There is a more modern Victorian um, spire in Preston in, in Lancashire, but in terms of medieval church buildings, there are only two buildings that are taller, which is um, Salisbury, Salisbury, Cathedral, Salisbury and, and Norwich Cathedral. Yeah. Right, but they're cathedrals, that's, that's an unfair competition. They're allowed, you tell me. Yes, yeah. they are. Jill, what's on the programme for this concert? Haydn's Creation, very popular work, and um, the 1812 Overture, yeah. which is often performed at outdoor concerts in summer. We, however, are performing it in Louth Church, so the logistics of getting a large orchestra in is itself quite tricky. We've got the choir singing in Russian at the opening of it, which isn't often heard. Um, and we have bells, cannons and fireworks. Well, bells in a church are not particularly surprising. Artillery is. We're faking it. Oh, We're using I'm modern te hear it. <laughs> technology is supplying the bells and the cannons. And uh, David will be performing both on synthesizer? Yes, it's, Computer, on, it, computerized. it's all computerised. And fireworks. Yes, it's just as well it's got a tall spire because I've been told <laughs> reliably that they will go three metres into the air. So this is fireworks so actually inside St James's Church? Oh yeah, that? a bit of pyrotechnics. Brilliant. So I say the logistics of all that is going to be quite something to behold. And so Dave, and, well, I'm sure it will be, it sounds absolutely spectacular. David, who is it actually who's going to be performing? You've got more than one uh, choir and you've got a, yes. a big orchestra. <laughs> It's the Louth Choral Society, but it's, it's also the Lincolnshire Chamber Orchestra. And Grantham Choral Oh, it's Grantham Choral Society. Society are taking yeah. part in uh, as well. So how yeah. many people all told? <sighs> well, we've got about 80 in our choir. I should think there's a similar number coming from Grantham. And um, the orchestra is enormous. It'll it be about 80 people. So that's pretty much a full, a, a full yeah. orchestra. Yes. And you'll be playing the harpsichord. Yes, I'm on. The harpsichord. Uh, presumably that's in the Haydn, I would imagine. In the Haydn, not, yes. Not, not the Tchaikovsky. Right. Let's just get the details across. It's Sunday the 22nd of November. It's Louth uh, St James's Church, 7.30 onwards. Where can people get tickets? Um, on the door. Uh, they have been sold at Even Ranshaw in Louth. Um, I think at this stage a lot of tickets have been sold. Okay. So look on the Choral website. Well, I'll just have give you that. All one word, louthchoral.co.uk or call 01507 463410. Yeah. yeah. That's it.
I'm sure it will be a fantastic event. I'm look, looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Over now to Emma Lingard with the business news for East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. Welcome to the business news for East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. Scunthorpe-based Chapel Foods has been bought out by Genius Gluten Free in a deal worth £3.5 million. The acquisition will see Genius taking over the operations, including the 30 employees. It will allow the brand to increase its UK and international distribution of the seven gluten-free products currently produced at the South Park site. The Grimsby Job Centre says people need to adapt to a changing job market. It comes after a number of companies locally have increasingly used social media to advertise jobs in place of more traditional methods. Lorraine Alexander, manager of the Job Centre, says getting people to search social media for jobs will help decrease unemployment. I think people unemployment. Need to adapt and change very quickly to keep up with the job hunting market. Um, I was on LinkedIn last night and there were two companies advertising vacancies on LinkedIn just in the North East Links area um, and we're seeing that more and more. Uh, the uh, Captain's Coves that opened locally recently uh, promoted their vacancies on Facebook. Businesses in the region have shown their support for City of Culture 2017 by attending an event in Hull seeking ambassadors. Organised by the Hull and Humber Chamber of Commerce, the event asked companies to appoint people interested in investing in arts and culture. The Hull-based leather repair company is looking to expand after local success. Having started in a garden shed, it's now expanded to include factories in the city and a retail store on South Street. Director Richard Hutchins says the rapid expansion of his company proves there's a local demand for leather repair. Rapidly, very rapidly. I mean, we've grown from literally garden shed at home through to many sheds, conservatory, um, into factory units into Widensea and then here into Hull with retail shops as well. Yeah, I mean we've got plans for the future we're now looking at opening up another factory up in um, Harrogate well just a, just below Harrogate in Tockworth and we've got plans to open a retail shop there and another retail shop coming hopefully you know early part of next year in London. Hessel-based P Squared have made a new appointment. Phil Matthews has been appointed as Head of International Development to bring the company's technology to foreign markets. The North Bank Company supplies software and hardware to the broadcast industry. And career specialist Frontline Recruitment has opened its sixth UK office in Hull. The new office will be managed by Kurt Whitcomb, who joins the company as a director and has over 20 years' experience in recruitment. And that's all from the Business News this week. Pool Home Tower on the banks of the Humber Estuary is a remnant of a time gone by, specifically the 15th century. It's believed to have been a medieval fortified house and it's now in need, understandably, of some redecoration. But that requires money. This week, guardian of the tower, Simon Taylor, comes back to give us a little more of a guided tour of the old place. So, here we are inside now. This is a barrel vaulted brick ceiling. It's quite unique. Uh, we've had to put this scaffold in to temporarily support it. Uh, well, we hope to get that all fixed and sorted. But it's a wonderful room. It's quite, it's quite special. So hidden in this corner, we have the, the stairs that are in the brickwork and it takes us up to the first floor landing. It's very steep, but let's come and have a look. So, so here we're on the first floor level now, and you see built into the walls are these arches, these alcoves. We're not quite sure what they are. There would have been a floor there. It's not there anymore. And over in this corner, we've got a portcullis. It goes down the door where we came in, the slots in the brickwork there. So it, there would have been a mechanism here to lift it and lower it, but down with the portcullis, door shut, very safe and secure. So these steps take us up to what will be the Second floor, well, the second floor landing, which uh, squeeze through the scaffold. Second floor's missing, and then these steps take us up to the roof, which is also missing. But we're going to sort that. 
From up here, the view is fantastic. Over to my right, there is the city of Hull. In front of me is the river. That's North Killingholme. That is Immingham. I can see Grimsby, Stone Creek. And all the way around, you can see panoramic views of South Holderness. Fantastic it is. I could, if the fog cleared a little bit, probably see the lighthouse at Spurn. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so this, there's a hole in the floor here, and this is what they called the garter robe. And the garter robe is a toilet, basically. So the contents of the toilet went down to the ground floor and out through a hole in the wall and across the field over there and just soaked away. It must have been very fresh in those days. Okay, so you've had a look around the tower and you see it's in quite a dangerous state at the moment. But if we get the money to renovate the tower, then we can open it to the public and all of you can come and have a look. It's a fantastic place. Time now for the sport. Fixtures for Saturday, Hull City face Bristol City away in the Skybet Championship. Saturday's televised trip will be the first of 10 games in 42 breathless days for Steve Bruce's men. Scunthorpe United face Bradford at Glanford Park in the Skybet League One and Grimsby Town come up against Eastleigh away in the Vanarama National League. Elsewhere, the Grimsby Telegraph reports that Paul Hurst saw encouraging signs from Grimsby Town's newest front pairing at the weekend with attention now switching to who he'll pick at Eastleigh. Alex Jones making his full debut after joining on loan from Birmingham City, partnered top scorer Padraig Armand in attack as the Mariners beat Welling United 3-1. Both impressed the boss with their link-up play. It's also been reported that Hull KR are remaining patient in their pursuit for a new prop. The Hull Daily Mail understands targets have been sounded out in recent weeks as coach Chris Chester sets a new head of rugby, Jamie Peacock, a list of desired players. Rather than panic buying, Rovers are continuing to wait until the right man comes along to join their forwards ranks. And Joe Wright and Ollie Swan from Grimsby's G4 Acre Racing Team have taken part in Scarborough's Richardson's CC Race at Filey Country Park. The mountain bike race, which was open to competitors of all ages, was White's first mountain bike race in five years and the first ever race for Swan. White finished in second place and Swan finished in fourth. And that's all from the sport. And that's it for tonight. Should mention that Louth Choral Society is always looking for members. Do you get in touch? No such thing as somebody who can't sing. If you've a news story for us, then please visit our Facebook or Twitter pages, email news at estu.tv or phone Grimsby 01472 31553. Until tomorrow, good evening. Estuary TV weather, sponsored by Rick's Petroleum, your local family-owned heating oil supplier this winter. Ricks, servicing the region's oil boilers this winter from a name you can trust. Get in touch at ricks.co.uk or call us on 01482 838383.